Dear saints of the Lord, may God's grace, mercy, and may his love dwell within your hearts now and always. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, I give thanks to you for blessing us with the opportunity to praise your name. We thank you that although we are sinners, that you have made us saints, that you have washed us and made us clean through our baptisms. We pray that each day that we would live lives in honor to you, that we would live lives that are blessed by you. We pray that your Holy Spirit might be our guide now and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you ever heard someone say or said yourself, I'm living the good life? If you have not said it yourself, what, is it, what does someone mean when they say, I'm living the good life? What types of things come to your mind when you think of someone who's living the good life? What types of things would you like to be doing if you were living the good life? Maybe when you come, when it, what, what you picture in your mind is having a big family before you, sitting with your children, looking at your grandchildren as they play, play together and as they grow together and they mature together. And some of you, as you think about living the good life, you, you think about uh, paying off your debt, paying off all those, the debts that you have on your car and your house and your credit card debt and being at peace when it comes, when the bills come in the mail. Maybe for some of you, it's, 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 as you picture living the good life, it's sitting on an, on an island somewhere, resting in that lawn chair, listening to the soft waves. Oh, sorry. Uh, maybe for some of you, it's a little bit more immediate. Maybe you're thinking about getting out of your parents' house, moving out on your own, uh, living and, and being independent. Well, for all of you, I'm sure something comes to your mind when you picture living the good life. When you picture what it means to just, well, relax. The other th truth is that probably for all of you, there's at least something you'd like to change about your life. That's true of many people who look forward to living the good life. There's something in their life they want to change, something about their life that they don't like, something in their life that they know that needs fixing. And so they look forward. They idealize. They put out this picture in their mind. And they say, if only. Is that picture in your mind? The picture that Jesus painted in Matthew chapter 5? I don't imagine for many of you it is. As you read through Matthew chapter 5, as you read those nine Beatitudes, those nine blessed statements, you probably think to yourself, wait a minute. We go from poor in spirit to, well, people harming us, people hating us. That's not what we picture as a good life. Well, when Jesus gave us the Beatitudes, he wasn't trying to paint a picture of the good life. And in truth, he wasn't trying to give us nine easy steps to the good life. Instead, he was trying to teach us about living a blessed life. And while living a good life may sound good, maybe even worthwhile, living the blessed life will lead to a more fulfilled life. Living a blessed life will lead to a more meaningful life. Now, living the blessed life does not mean that life will be easy, comfortable, joyful. In fact, as you read through the Beatitudes, it sounds quite the opposite of that. But living the blessed life is living with our Lord and walking with our Lord. Now, as we look at the Beatitudes today, I need to, to, to give you a little caution. When Jesus gave the Beatitudes, and when he oftentimes taught, he taught in a couple of different ways because he had different students. And sometimes he would use descriptive language, which is what the Beatitudes are, and sometimes he would use prescriptive language. Let me give you an example of the prescriptive language. In prescriptive language, it, it would be as if it, at the end of chapter 5, where he says, you should be the salt of the earth. It is a command of what we are to do. Or in Matthew chapter 6, a little further in the Sermon on the Mount, where he says that you should, how you should pray, how you should give to the poor, how you should fast. Now, that's prescriptive language. It's kind of like the law in the Old Testament. It's what we are to do to live as the people of God. Now, when Jesus uses descriptive language like he does in the Beatitudes, though, and this is the warning here, it's how our life is going to be. It's kind of like Jesus saying to us, if you follow me, this is what you're signing up for. What he's not saying is that this is what you should seek after. He's not saying that you need to go ahead and seek after a poor spirit or seek after mourning. The Lord knows that we have enough of that as is. How many of us have to seek after a poor spirit, after that being down and out? Some of you know it more than the rest of us. How many of us have to seek after mourning? We don't have to have someone die to know how easy it is to lose and to hurt and to have loss. 
It's easy to talk about those as description though. But sometimes we fall into the trap when we talk about the meek or the pure-hearted or the, the righteous or, or we, when we talk about showing mercy. We, we hear those verses and we read those and we think about that blessed be and, and we think, well, that's what I need to be. I need to be more humble, more merciful. I need to be more pure in heart. I need to be more righteous. The only problem is, folks, even as saints of the Lord, we can't. As saints of the Lord, we are sinners still and we are broken people. Pure in heart, we're anything but. Meek, humble. Well, we know what false humility looks like. A lot of people wear it as a a badge of honor, as pride, don't they? They talk about how humble they are, and you kind of and we, we see right through the hypocrisy. Merciful, the only reason we know what mercy is is because God has shown it to us. More often than not, we're more worried about our own hearts, where we stand, what's right, right for us. No, and even that righteousness only comes from a gift of God. Now, when we start to make the Beatitudes prescriptive instead of descriptive, we put a bar above our heads that is so high that we will never reach. The Beatitudes aren't intended to be a nine easy steps or hard steps to be living the Christian life or the blessed life. They're intended as descriptions of what it means to follow God. They are descriptions of how our lives will shape and form as we follow God. And this is where it comes into play, living that blessed life. Living the blessed life doesn't come from following a number of checklists or, follow, or, che- or being able to, to be in worship on a regular basis or even in, in a prayer, which is, those things are so important. Living the blessed life is in that daily relationship with God. That daily relationship with Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That daily time set apart all 24 hours for God to shape you and form you. You know, Paul talks about this a little bit himself. Paul talks about the fact that on a daily basis, we need to, again, revisit our baptisms. That we need to end again, drown the old Adam that lives within us. On a daily basis, to live a blessed life, we need to be in relationship with God. We need to be, re- realize just what a poor, miserable sinner we are. The poor, miserable sinner you are. The poor, miserable sinner I am. And we need to regularly come before God. Come to our baptism again and confess those sins. Regularly seek the Lord's guidance and direction. And that's where the living a blessed life begins. Recognizing who we are before God. Recognizing how much we need our God. How much we need the salvation that He gave us on the cross. But it doesn't end there. Because living the blessed life, God daily is shaping and forming us by His Holy Spirit. Living the blessed life means on a regular basis that the Holy Spirit is working within our hearts. And this is an important part of living as the saints of the Lord, is knowing that the Holy Spirit is daily working on us. Whether we're going through times of mourning, whether we're going through great times, the, the Holy Spirit is leading us in our prayer lives. He is walking alongside us because we don't know exactly what we need to pray for. We're sinners. We know what we want to pray for. We know what we think that we need. But only the Holy Spirit can tell us what we truly need. The Holy Spirit walks alongside us as He guides us in the words of Scripture. Now, Scripture in of itself, it is powerful. It is a tool. It is a gift that God has given us, His living and breathing Word to us. But for some people, when they read the pages of Scripture, all they see are words on a page. And that's because they don't have the Holy Spirit's guidance. I have a friend who's, who I went to college with. And now he lives in Flagstaff and he's a nurse. And, and he said, you know what, I've read through the Bible two times, cover to cover, and I was impressed. I said, great, I'm glad you... And he said, but it doesn't mean anything to me. And how many people have you talked to who have said the same thing? They've read the Bible from cover to cover, but they don't know what the message is. It's only by the teaching of the Holy Spirit that the words of Scripture can be a guide to our hearts, can lead us in paths of righteousness. It'd be like, having a huge meal, perhaps having several bowls of chili or, 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 or soup to this afternoon and filling yourself up and filling yourself up and never actually being full. 
Never receiving nourishment. That's how it is for people who read Scripture without the Holy Spirit. They keep reading and they can read it all day until they're blue in the face. But unless the Holy Spirit works in their heart, unless the Holy Spirit guides them, they don't know what those words mean. Salvation means nothing to them. And that's why we pray so often that the Holy Spirit would move in the unbelievers' hearts. The Holy Spirit would change hearts and lives. Because when, when the Holy Spirit works through the power words of, of Scripture, it can change hearts and lives. The Holy Spirit, He also gives us purpose in our lives. As saints of the Lord, can you imagine what life would be without knowing your purpose? Just take a, out of being Christian. Can you imagine what life would be like if you didn't know your purpose? If all that you did all day long is wandered around, maybe you went from one job to the next, but you never knew why you were doing it, life would get boring. It seemed rather hopeless. The Holy Spirit gives us purpose for our lives. The Holy Spirit gives us a reason to live, a reason to live out our faith, to be the people of God. The Holy Spirit walks with us and He guides us each and every step of the way. And even when we're not sure what our purpose is, we know that God has a divine purpose for us. That He is even now using us, using the events of our lives to shape us. Using us to shape other people's lives. Using our prayers on behalf of others. The Holy Spirit shows us our destination. Not only does He show us our purpose here on earth, but where we're going. See, we're fairly blind when it comes to our sinfulness. We're completely blind. Really, truly, we would not be able to see the glory and love of God. But the Holy Spirit shows us that God is even now preparing a place for us. That the, way that, we, that the ways that we live on this earth, the ways that we lead our lives on this earth, that they do have eternal importance. That God is preparing us rest with Him eternally. Today we celebrate All Saints Day. We celebrate those who have gone before us. We celebrate those who are now at rest with the Lord in His eternal presence. As we celebrate their, their rest, we look forward to that same rest, to that same promise God gives to us. But we know that it is not something that we earn. And we know that even if we could live up to God's standard, which we can't, not, keep, not sinning once during the day, that we would still fail. That's why, most importantly, the Holy Spirit points us to the cross. The Holy Spirit is often called the shy member of the Trinity because His, His goal is not to be the center of attention, but instead point us to the healing that comes through Christ on the cross. The healing of Christ's body and blood as He shed, them, shed His body and blood for us and poured out His blood on our behalf. The Holy Spirit points us to that promise that Jesus not only said, that I forgive them, Father, I forgive them, but He said, Father, I forgive each one of these people, each one of these children, as if He said to you, I forgive you. The Holy Spirit shows us that message. The Holy Spirit shows us that promise. And the Holy Spirit shows us how important it is that we share that promise with others. Because how true it is that there are people who go through this life looking for the good life. Looking for a life that has purpose, that has meaning, but are not able to find it. They go through this life each and every day and they don't know why. They don't know how their lives will have any kind of consequence. Many of them believe that when they die, that it's the end. And we have a message of hope, a message that is greater than the world just coming to an end, that our lives just ending. We have the message of the hope that salvation is here, that salvation is in Christ, and the Holy Spirit gives us words to share that message. The Holy Spirit gives us and inspires our hearts to share that word. And we need, we need people of God, saints of the Lord, to share that message because there are too many people who have not heard it, who are going throughout this life without meaning, without purpose, who believe that the only good things in lives are money and cars and houses and the internet or boats or whatever it might be. And the truth is, those things are empty and those things will end and those things are going to fall apart and break. And there's one thing they need. 
And that is the hope and promise of salvation. Because that is the one thing that we need, that we needed, that we ever will need. That hope and promise that Jesus is wiping away the tears of our eyes. That He's preparing a place even now where there is not suffering, where there is not pain, where there is no more tears or fears, but only the presence of Christ, only the presence of God. That's what it means for us to celebrate All Saints Sunday. That's what it means for us to celebrate is knowing not only living here on this earth, but knowing that there is a place even now prepared for us. That we are the people of God blessed by Him. That we are the people of God led by Him. That we are the people of God who are filled up and made whole by Him. That He is the one who is sufficient for us. And He is the one who will always be with us. And that even in our dying breath, the Holy Spirit will call us home, take us by the hand, and lead us into the presence of the Father. O saints of the Lord, may the Lord bless your life. May He give you His love. May He give you His mercy. And may He be your guide. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to You for sending Your Holy Spirit to be the one who walks with us each and every day of this life, who shows us Your heart and shows us Your mercies. We pray, Lord, for Your forgiveness for those times when we, when we realize how much we have failed to keep Your law and failed to to know that there's something greater to be with you. Those times we ask for your forgiveness when we, when we get caught up in the worldly things, money or f- goods, homes, jobs. Forgive us for those times and help us to again return to your cross. Again, return to your word of forgiveness. Send your Holy Spirit to lead us again to know that when you spoke those words of forgiveness on the cross, those very words were for us. That as you spoke those words of forgiveness, that all sins were forgiven. That you forgave our sins once and for all. Lord, lead us to have that confidence, that hope. Lead us to trust in you. And lead us that we might truly know what it means to know your blessings. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.